everyone. This is Hani from Culture's Compass, and today we're going to be joined with Rosina, who's going to let us know about her musical background, some of her work, and what we're to expect for GTMF 2024. So how are you, Rosina? I'm good. I'm a bit tired, but I'm good. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about who Rosina is. So Rosina, I'm a musician, a singer mostly, and I do a lot of um, political organizing within an arts context more so these days. Um, we run, we help run a space for queer and trans folks, uh, primarily focusing on black and brown bodies, but friends and everyone's welcome. And that's called Unit 2. And we've been running that for about 17 years out of our home warehouse. Um, but I'm part of a duo called LAL, which is an electronic duo um, for Can 25 years. That? LAL. LAL, yeah. LAL. LAL. And then this, for this project, this interview, it's about the Rosina Project, which is a project we started during COVID. Um, my production partner, Nicholas Murray, and then also it featured Fanny Galore Wings, who's an amazing drag performer from Chile, Toronto, Chile, Rexdale, Chile. Mm -hmm. um, so the three of us just kind of pretend like we're British and we just talk shit about all kinds of stuff and just poking fun at everything. Um, and it's a dance music, um, global dance. We call it global dance music. I don't like that term, but mm -hmm. it's just a, a mix of, we just get super stoned and just do our thing and I yeah so it. that's so we kind of we created that project out of COVID was such a for everyone such a shit show that we actually would have dance parties outside and we would dance a lot because we live in the warehouse empty sort of street at that time and we would have a lot of parties and we just wanted to evoke joy so Rosina came out of this idea of like let's just evoke joy let's hit some hard issues but let's actually try to get people to dance and release some of this misery and pain and see. so yeah so that's kind of but then I do all kinds of stuff. Like it sounds very fluid. So is your music like sort of um, planned and structured in how it's going to be or how much of it is improvised? Within Lao, it's, it's even though we compose the music in, in a live setting, it's com it's, most of it's improvised. Mm -hmm. And with Rosina, it's the same thing. Like we have the structures of the songs, but the whole, like, you know, the audience or where you're playing, um, the atmosphere can really change you know, how you react, so it completely changes depending. And Nick, he, he does everything live on, a, on electronics, like keyboards and stuff, and it's mostly just an octatrack. Mm -hmm. we, we just got sick of using a Mac. And so depending on the vibe that we also create on stage, it totally can change. I see. Yeah. Yeah. And could you tell us a little bit about what shaped your sort of musical interests? What impacts you and influences you in your work? Um, I think we're music lovers at heart. Um, Nick and I and Franny, we listen to all kinds of music and we're not, we're not snobs, mm -hmm. you know, we're just like, we just love to meet people and stories and really uh, check out new stuff. Um, in Toronto, there is such a good musical and art scene. Sometimes you have to dig for it. Like you mm -hmm. can't just, you know, go to the mainstream stuff. Right. That stuff is really boring, but like, but there's a ton of musicians who come in and out or artists. And if you just kind of like float around, let your spirit carry you, you'll be surprised at what you fall into. So Toronto definitely has been um, a place that we've really been able to have with the different musical styles, which is because it's everyone is here yes. to a certain extent. But also like looking towards Europe, like London, especially the UK, mm -hmm. um, even parts of where we're from, like India, um, the West Indies, Nick is from Barbados, so mm -hmm. the West Indies is very much influenced in our music. Yes. Um, even South American rhythms and sounds are very much embedded into sort of like our techno house. Very nice. Kinda. So the musical background, sorry, the uh, cultural backgrounds of those involved yeah. in Rosina would influence totally. the, the music. Yeah, yeah. Very and nice. it's, it's very, it's, it's subtle, but it's not, but it's our take. There's always this talk of the experience of being from Canada, and often that's from a very white, cis, straight lens that I find. So what we do is we just organically have never been embarrassed of our roots and we just bring them in in a way that's kind of speaks to our experience as immigrants. Um, even though I was born here, my family immigrated in the 90s and the 60s. I see. And so there's a, it's a different conversation. We're, we're a complete different being, you know? So this is what we try to create from. Very nice. Yeah. And you touched upon how the scene is like in Toronto. How much has living in Toronto um, impacted your work. I would like to know the impact of Toronto on your music mm -hmm. and your music. Yeah, it's, I think it's been one of the most impactful because not only do we make music, but we curate music. I've worked for big festivals. Um, since the 90s, we came out of like an uh, underground record store in uh, culture. 
Um, and so we were always tied to the local scene before, you know, um, hip hop and R and B and dance music became massive in Canada through mainstream outlets. It was all underground and campus radio and vinyl DJs and flyers. So we've always been living downtown. That's always been sort of our our vibe. Anything from Maraca to Brazilian stuff to like you know Indian stuff. And so I always wanted to show how. Um, how great the musical and artistic lens is coming from marginalized voices, you know? And often that doesn't happen unless you become rich or famous or whatnot, but, yes. you know? So mm -hmm. I've curated at Harborfront for Luminato for all kinds of different festivals, but then I just found that um, just really constraining, especially when we talk about what diversity. What do you constraining? Well, there's this political dialogue around indigeneity and giving homage to this land um, or you know anti-blackness or anti-racism or and, you know not being homophobic or transphobic, but often I feel like people are just using that language. It's a bit performative. It's and very just sort of like the introduction yeah. and let's move on. Yeah, yeah because right. like if you're going to change power, then you have to in include those communities yes. in the decisions, yes. and that's not what's happening. Yeah. You know, yeah, so yeah, I'm always yeah. like, mm. very good points. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. And um, have any communities or neighborhoods or even maybe venues in Toronto? played a major role in sort of your musical background? I mean, not really. I mean, all of them have, but I see. like we've literally been here for 25 years as electronic artists. So we've, I mean, back in the 90s, early 2000s, we had so many more clubs and under, underground spots. Harbor Front was amazing for live music outside. And I just feel like as the city builds more condos, um, that no one can live in, the more conservative it gets. Mm -hmm. And so there's this lack of sort of live, uh, there is, but it's, joy. It, but it's like boring, the stuff that's out there, and I, I don't love it, you I know, um, the stuff like the festivals and stuff, but, and there is good stuff, but back then you could just roll around and you could go to government, or you could go to a small club on, on King Street, mm -hmm. or you could roll into the, you know, to the park and you'd see a, a big festival or a decent festival. and. I just feel like people are either growing too big and most of the underground has been pushed into these corners. I see. You know, so I'm still, but Toronto has very much influenced sort of our whole, our whole thing. Especially if you're politically active, which we, we were coming from immigrant or black and, and or indigenous communities. It's like, this is our political being, like it, it's in our music because it's who we are. Yeah. And so we participate in supporting a lot of those movements. Excellent. As well. And my last question regarding Toronto. Do you sense that there's a, maybe an excelling or a lack of um, a true representation and um, bringing in equity, accessibility, and diversity um, in the musical scene of Toronto? Are there things to improve, or do you oh think gosh, things are on the right still, track? Uh, what um, do you think? I mean, Tor I mean, Toronto is still quite young, mm -hmm. you know. So at the age that we're at, perhaps and the history and culture of the English versus the French, which who are much more conservative, you know, there are some, I'm seeing change. I'm seeing people of my generation get better jobs, um, have more decision-making power. Mm -hmm. But often um, we're tokens. Yes. Often we're brought in because they need to fill that position, but they're not actually empowering us. So they're, they're not giving us the power to actually make decisions. It still is under you know, uh, what the, the CBC wants or whatever, so, instead yes. of listening to what our communities actually want to listen to. Mm -hmm. The fact that mainstream radio over here doesn't play all sorts of music all the time, not just like, you know, here's a Punjabi show or here's a reggae show, like, it's ridiculous, you know, mm -hmm. because the city is so diverse. Mm -hmm. And if they actually knew about the communities in this city, you would have all kinds of music playing. Mm -hmm. so, so I take it that you think that the diversity serves is there and that they can we protect and stay? That they really facilitate sort of universality yes. and um, accessibility for these Well, they, and they have, have strategies, but they're strategies implemented by people who have not lived those experiences. These experiences. So even with like disability, um, you know, it's like often, you know, at least the places that I've worked, they've had, you know, they're attempting disability stuff, but then they don't have anybody who identifies with having mm -hmm. a disability and or they're overworked to a point where it's impacting their health. I see. And I'm like, that's not going to work for a disabled person. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you need to slow this shit down. Mm -hmm. So, I have my, uh, I have my stories. But yeah, I so I, I, I have hope because I have to because I live here. But as somebody who comes from uh, 
I call it DIY or, or do it together culture. Mm -hmm. um, we've always just done what we wanted because we can't wait for others to do to it for you. Up. Yeah. yeah, I just like we're not gonna wait for you to catch up. Yeah. We're just gonna keep continuing. You continue. need to come on my level. Exactly. And then trust, thing. and then trust us, you know, versus like just saying that you trust us and yes. then micromanaging or microaggressive Excellent. stuff all the time. It's, it's like it's a very colonial approach. Exactly. Yes. And all this approach. talk around like you know, indigeneity and, and respect the people and the mm -hmm. land. I'm like, how do you do that? Exactly. And that's control, lack of control. Right. You know? Excellent. Thank you. Relations, and it's like um, I'm gonna shift to like GTMF now. Uh, so, how do you feel about participating in Global Toronto Music Festival 2024, and what can viewers expect? So this is like interesting because um, we've been a part of the music community for a long time, and I've, as I said, I've curated before. But we're very, it's very difficult for us to get into these sort of festivals and things. And so, getting into um, this particular festival was through, I think, networks in Toronto, but actually from Ottawa. I think I really helps like get us into this festival. I'm not too sure. Um, there's great people working there, um, but I'm curious because I noticed um, that there was a lack of queer and trans folks on the on the bill. Um, I noticed that within there's like a there's a you know there's lots of men of color in power, um, but I'm like, but where are the women of color or mm -hmm. where are the trans folks or mm -hmm. the queer folks? So I'm still trying to figure out what and who they are, but we're super. Um, we have lots of friends who are involved uh, musically or you know or are part of the periphery so i don't know yet but i am i am excited and glad to have been invited um rosina will be bringing the rosina project which is essentially uh, we have an album called basic income you, and you, you have what sorry we have an album called basic an income album. and so it's kind of like an hour i'm not sure how long we'll get to perform but gender, it's like gender fluid performance between masculinity and femininity, um, or we, we, we performance well. in the musical sense or yeah. in the actual well, physical performance? Well, no, actual physical, like we, we're kind of like in drag. I see. Um, and then we, we swap genders and, and so then it's we very just theatrical like, it's at very the same theatrical. time. Yeah, very we're nice. dancing, we dance a lot and, and we poke a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. We pretend we're from the UK just because we know Toronto doesn't like local their own, so <laughs> we pretend we're from somewhere I love else. that. And it's actually really it's like fun. you thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And do you have any projects that you're working on currently that you're particularly excited about um, to bring out? Probably, so. we're working on the second Rosina album right now. Uh, we got really good funding from the Canada Council okay. um, and Ontario Arts Council, and so we're working on that. Um, Lal, my other band, a duo with Nicholas, we just put out our 25th album, 25th year um, album anniversary. 25th. Yeah, and we made we made a film. Um, Unit 2 does a, um, a series of workshops that we're setting up for next year to really support sort of like marginalized queer and trans artists because the city's become so expensive. So mm -hmm. those are the main focus of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then we used to do a lot of, a lot more, but we all needed to break since COVID because we did a lot of care work and people were just having such a hard time. Yes. Um, that we're just kind of trying to focus on our, on our art. I, my last two questions for you, Rosina. You mentioned a lot about queer and trans artists mm -hmm. and folks. Um, wh uh, why is it important for you, this particular representation and clear mentioning of, the, um, of these communities? <clears throat> well, partially because half the world is gay. So <laughs> it's like you're just kidding. Can confirm. Half the world, like, hello. <laughs> I'm also gender fluid um, or non binary, is what people are using. Uh, Franny is trans identified. Nick is a cis straight black man, but he kind of, I always say, you're kind of queer. Um, <laughs> and also because so much of, especially now, mainstream is so influenced by queer culture. Yes. Like they're just stealing it at this yes. point. Yes. You know what I mean? So it's, to, to, and, and so many, because we do so much care work, like we house people, we feed people in our community. It's like we're in such precarious situations. And I'm like, if the talent is here and, they're, and you're stealing all this from us and give back to us. You know, because at the end of the day, when people are struggling, we're the ones as a community who are supporting each other. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's really important for me to bring, uh, you know, to make sure that we represent ourselves mm -hmm. authentically mm -hmm. and not be afraid. Agency. Of yeah. Your own yeah. voice. Cool. Yeah. And my last question, where can people find you? God, this is the part that I suck. <laughs> so we have a website, <laughs> brand new by Plastique, which is their new marketing slash management a company, mm -hmm. a duo from uh, Mexico originally, so they're here now. Um, it's like, what is it? 
It's rosinamusic.xyz. Rosinamusic.xyz. That's probably wrong. <laughs> Um, our Instagram is Rosina Multiple Futures. Rosina, because we also believe in like uh, that we can live multiple futures with, with different people and surroundings. Beautiful. Well, can you um, be found on Spotify or SoundCloud or what are some? I think we're we're off the Cuban label okay. um, called E Techno. Okay. Uh, we decided to go with them because a they're from Cuba, b they're amazing techno DJs, but they just didn't they don't have any money. But we like we didn't care. We just mm -hmm. actually want to um, support what you're doing. So. Mm -hmm. So I think it's on Spotify, but they have it all wrong. So it's not under Rosina, it's under my name. <laughs> and then Franny also has, Franny Galore Wings, um, has a TikTok that also puts Rosina stuff out. So yeah, we're not very good at the social media stuff, but you know, we're getting there. We'll go. <laughs> it was a pleasure to have you, Rosina. Thank you, Thank you so, so much. much. Yeah. All Thank the best. You. The world is gay, so <laughs> it's like you're just kidding. Can confirm. Like, <laughs> oh, it was good. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Awesome.